Hi everybody. <laughs> so tonight I've got Lynn Hill in the kitchen and Lynn is kind of going to come along and make us, what type of cake are you making Lynn? What I'm making it? a Christmas punch cake using your gorgeous flavoured icing sugars. Oh, you've always been a fan of it. Hello. And what sponge are you making? Is I'm just making a very simple sponge using um, 12 ounces of flour, butter, sugar and, and So is that like a Victoria sponge mix? Just a Victoria sponge mix. Perfect. So basic Victoria sponge mix, Lynn is actually going to show you. She's going to make it also, show you how to line it in and make three layers. Pop them in the oven. She's already got three prepared, which she's going to decorate for you and make our Christmas uh, punch cake, which looks absolutely fabulous. So she's going to put that together for you. And then Lynn's going to talk to you about her club. And her club name is, and I always get this <laughs> difficult word, Clandestine? Clandest Clandestine Cake Club. Where did you get a name like that? I wanted, I was doing a secret tea room at the time, so I wanted something secret and undercover and clandestine. And someone on social media suggested the word clandestine, so... Clandestine, like, yeah, it was, mm -hmm. right. Well, I became a member many years ago when I met Lynn. Uh, we were just talking about it four mm -hmm. years ago, was it? I think it was three or four years yes, ago yeah. um, at one of the cake shows. And uh, one of her representatives came over to see me, told me about the club, and I joined. And um, it's free, so I'm going to get Lynn to tell you more about that shortly. Before we go on with the night, let's just tell you a few things about what's been going on. So, last week I was doing a demo, and I think lots of people forget that when I'm doing a demo, I'm a hobby baker, I'm trying to put everything together in an hour and a half to two hours, I make mistakes and I'm quite happy about making them, nothing's perfect, and really I don't really want anything to be perfect, because... What I'm trying to do is encourage bakers out there who, or want to be bakers, people who are scared of baking, I want to encourage them to think, you know what, I think I'll have a go at that. And so far, I'm achieving that. People are getting up and having a go, and that's what I really like. So a couple of pointers that did come up last week is that maybe I should have leveled my cake. And uh, when I make a wedding cake, or but using nifty nozzles, if you're going to um, do a cake where you want it perfectly flat, yes, you know what, take off the top. But for the Nifty Nozzles cakes, you don't need to because you're just slapping it all around with buttercream. But what I should have done is I should have turned it upside down and then put it together and it would have been a lot flatter. And the other thing is some people told me that I didn't use cake balls between the dummies. And in fairness, I never use cake balls between dummies. Not for that demonstration. If I was going to send it out on a wedding cake, absolutely. And obviously if I'd done real cakes, I would have put cake balls between each tier. But it was dummy, it was fun. You know, we was here two hours making the thing and uh, we actually achieved a hell of a lot in that time. So I just wanted to explain that. And then the other thing, um, afterwards you all got spammed, well not all of you, but lots of you got spammed by a man called Tom, who is selling copy Chinese nozzles copies of our designs and the cheeky little soul and he's probably watching now and um, even used my image <laughs> with nifty nozzles on my wedding cake and then spammed you all on messenger to buy his nozzles so i really do appreciate all of you who told him to go away and uh, i believe he was abusive to many of you so that just shows the type of seller that he is so stick with us at sugar and crumbs you know who you're dealing with and buy only the genuine nifty nozzle so what are we going to do tonight? Lynn's going to make her cake and then I'm just going to show you a few things over here. So John, if you just want to pop it over here. So we've got the pillow pans in guys. These are in now. So Gwen from um, the DK applicator or the Drage, she'll be in next week. And I'm probably going, well, I don't know whether we're going to actually sugar paste these up, but I'm going to have a go at putting these together. But it is showtime next week, so I've got a lot on. So we may have to do that in December. But the pillow pans are in. The mini pattern comb scrapers are in. So if you've got the smaller tiered cakes, the comb scrapers are in. The Christmas flavours, just to tell you about those. The new Christmas tip tree cutters are in. Um, the brand new cutter from FMM. Um, Merry Christmas for the side of your cake is in as well for your sugar paste. Don't forget the gingerbread house. The boys from Baked In will be in on the 20th of November to show you how to make this marvellous thing. And then these are the two exciting things here. Yeah, so these two cookbooks here, these have, made, these have been um, 
made by Lynn, okay? I'm not selling the cookbooks. Lynn will be able to tell you where to get them, but they're definitely a worthwhile investment. And Lynn will actually go through these during the night and tell you all about them, what types of recipes are in there, how easy they are to make and where you can buy them. And then if you're wondering what I'm doing tonight, okay? I'll just get John over here. I'm going to tell you about this gadget, which is the three in one snack maker, okay? It's from Gourmet Gadgetry, okay? If you went into Lakeland, it's £49.99. We have it on our website for £42. But anybody who buys one this week, I've got it on offer for £35. And you get one of these free mixers to go with it as well, okay? So I've only actually used it for the first time tonight. If you're looking to do professional cakes, then I'd probably say don't use it. This is a fun thing when you've got the children round, the grandkids round, you can make a cake mix in a bowl, put it in here, decorate it, and just have a bit of fun with it. And that's what this is for, just something simple and easy to have out. You don't need all your mixers out. You don't need everything else. It's about this machine and a packet of cake mix. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to use that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass you over to Lynn now. Let's get her cake ready and in the oven, and uh, we'll get moving. Well today I'm making three layers of sponge which I've already baked earlier. Um, I'm actually using butter here but I've also, instead of using caster sugar, I have uh, 300, let me look at the recipe. I've got 340 grams of unsalted butter which is the equivalent of 12 ounces. But also I'm going to flavour the sponge with Christmas punch flavoured icing sugar from Sugar and Crumbs. But I'm also going to mix it with about 150 grams of caster sugar here. So let me just figure out how this works. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, then I forgot to see who was here. So you figure out how that works, or I can quickly tell you. And um, so, John, is anybody here tonight? <laughs> yes, we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of regulars. Yeah, do you want to shout out some hellos to people? Yeah, we've got Lynn Feather, we've got Diane Hosey, Sam Phillips. Who's looking at a blank screen at the moment? Oh right. Okay. Uh, Julie Smith, Geraldine Kisby, Lindsay McIver, Sarah Williams. We've got Tracy Freshney from Grimsby. Oh, fantastic. Wendy Ann Preston. We've got Jackie Heaton, Jenny Fleming. Hi everybody. Lizzie Hello. Jennifer. Karen Naylor. Oh, all our Net regulars. Then. Tracy Atkinson, Melanie Grant, Sarah Williams. Hi everybody! Sorry, I, think I might be repeating some names here. <laughs> Trisha James, Shalene Hodder, Owen Osborne, Marilyn Hill. So, so some some new we've got someone so someone from Dubai. Oh no, where's Dubai? Fantastic. I missed that before though. Ahead, Joe before. Slatley, I'm coming, so sorry if I've missed anyone. No worries. So Lynn, where are we up to? I've just added the icing sugar and the caster sugar and I'm giving it a good mix. But what's also important is that you scrape down the side, so I'm just going to turn that off just a little bit and then oh, just scrape down the sides a little bit because sometimes the mixture can get stuck a little bit and get down to the bottom as well. And, do that. and while that's mixing, I'm going to put my eggs in here and give them a little beat. I want that to become really nice and light and fluffy. And I have six large eggs here. Now, if you find that you only have medium eggs, by all means use medium eggs. Um, don't bother to increase medium to, say, seven eggs, because if you're going to test for the batter, the dropping consistency, and we can always add a little bit of milk later on. But usually what I do is I usually give my eggs a little bit of a mix. And rather than pour it all in at once, I will add some flour. So let me just turn that off and scoop down the sides again. And what I'm going to do now is add the equivalent of a few tablespoons of flour to this mixture whilst I drizzle in my beaten eggs and adding some flour does actually help get curdling so in the absence of a spoon I think I'll use do you have a spoon? Absolutely. Amazing thing for doing. Oh good. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
just to put a few tablespoons of flour in there. And then I'm going to turn the mixer on really high and I'm just going to pour the beaten egg in there and hopefully it won't curdle. But if it does, I'm not worried. And I'm just putting the egg down the side so that it can incorporate. I'll just say if it does curdle a little bit, don't worry because when we add the rest of the flour, it will all mix in. Yeah, it should be on the website under we the put, we recipes put it on the website, tab. Yeah, but we didn't add it to the Facebook page. But we'll add that later. We've actually put you on our recipe website link, Have you? and um, we've just forgot to add it on, but we'll add that on the website. Right. But the can go to the Cake Club website, it should be on there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just simply adding the flour, and on the lowest speed, so that we don't all get covered in flour, I just want to incorporate that. So I've just noticed a gentleman called Deep Singh Bawa, I think that's his name, has just joined us. And the reason I don't want to tell you, we're having an international person join us next week. Ooh. So Deep Singh is actually coming to Cake International and he's actually doing um, a following. It's, what's it called? Baker's Home Baking Tour, isn't it? It's a home baking tour where he's actually going around seeing all the different demonstrators in the UK at Cake International and uh, sharing it with his Facebook followers in India. So next week we've got Gwen Powell coming here to the Sugar and Crumbs Kitchen to show you some more hints and tips with her DK applicator. Deep is going to come along and join us and um, he's going to be making something. So where we're showing India the DK applicator, we're going to be showing India something to make with um, our flavoured icing sugars, but Deep is going to use an Indian recipe. So we're not sure what he's going to make yet, but one of their desserts, they're going to incorporate our flavoured ice and sugars, and he's going to make that live for you next week. And uh, obviously share our Facebook live with his Indian audience as well. I'm not sure that it's going to be the same time, because it'll be three in the morning there. So I don't know how many of his followers will be up, but we'll give it a go. So we'll put up to you, Lynn. Hello, Deep. What I would just want to mention is about what you call the dropping consistency, and that is a dropping consistency. If it wasn't a dropping consistency, if it was a little drier, what you could do is just add a, perhaps up to a tablespoon of milk and then just give it a good mix to incorporate it all. But that is all nicely incorporated. And what I'm going to do now is, after I lick my fingers to taste that lovely batter. We don't. <laughs> this is our private kitchen, and you can gorgeous. do what you want. Absolutely. <laughs> These are my three... Thank you. These are my three loose bottom sandwich tins here. And just a little tip as to how I actually line my cake tins. If you need a slightly deeper sided cake tins but you don't have any, you can actually cut a strip of baking parchment, fold it along and then just slice the bottom so that you have these folds. And then if you just grease the sides and the base of your tin and then put that baking parchment around the side, Get one of these circular ones. Do you have these as well at Sugar and Crumbs, the circular? We don't. No, no. I always tell them to go to home, home baking. Um, home bargains. Home bargains. <laughs> and then just fill it there. Yeah. And what happens with this particular quantity of cake batter, there's a tendency for it to rise slightly above the cake, the edge of the cake tin, whereas having paper around the side, it just helps it to rise a little bit further so it doesn't overflow. So I'm going to evenly spread the batter between the three tins and hopefully I get it right. I did do some measurements at home and they worked out at roughly about 600 
grams. But just to recap about the quantity of ingredients here, that although it's got six eggs, it has 12 ounces of flour, 12 ounces of sugar, and 12 ounces of butter. And if you're not sure about the measurements for the dry ingredients, what you can do is whatever eggs you have in, you could actually weigh the eggs on some scales, with the eggs, with the shells of course, and then measure all the dry ingredients to match. So if your eggs weigh 300 grams, then get your flour, butter, sugar to weigh the same and do it that way if you wish. I did that for the first time the other week and that, that's right, that, isn't it? It, it? Yeah, it is actually. It does I used to up. just throw in the eggs. Yeah. But um, I think it was Verena who came along and she said, no, make sure you weigh the eggs. And I haven't done it all. It works quite well either way. Now, hopefully, can you tell whether those are even or not? I suppose I should get the scales out, shouldn't I? I was a bit... Do you want the scales? I won't mind, because that way I know that they're all three of them are going to... Weigh the same. Yeah, weigh the same, and they're going to cook the same as well. So okay. let me have a quick look. I know what the tins weigh, so if I can get roughly... <laughs> I do this when I do Yorkshire tea loaves at home. I weigh each of them the same. Ooh, six, that might be a bit too heavy. That's 671. Ooh, right, that's a bit too much. And then I'm going to spend hours <laughs> getting it just right. Getting it just right. But these are going to be in the oven for about 25 minutes. That needs more as well. Toing and froing. <laughs> I 70. That's, that's about right. Any questions, John, so far? Oh, about the cake club. Yes. It's free to join, free to register, free to attend clubs, um, and we're non competitive. So people don't have to worry that they don't have to be perfect bakers. We're all, as you were saying last week, that we're all home bakers, aren't we? Yeah. I must admit, I've been to a couple of them and they're actually quite friendly. It's yeah. actually nice to meet up with the uh, local bakers. I joined Lynn's Club a couple of years ago and um, I went along. It is all free. It's free to join. It's free to join your local club. Lynn sends out lots of newsletters, hints and tips and recipes. Um, you've got a Facebook club as well. I have a Facebook page and I've recently launched an actual group as well um, so that you actually get more regular notifications on the group. On the group as well as the groups on the website yeah. so people can register on the website and some of the groups are actual, sort of similar to Facebook. And once you get used to the website, it works perfectly well. And, and then on the groups, do you do hints and tips on there and things like that? Or is it about your member, your clubs? It's mostly about them? the members. There are some of my recipes on there as well. Um, but often members will actually post their own recipes within the groups or yeah. link to recipes, yeah. and things that they've, uh, they've yeah. actually used. Um, and they often treat the groups themselves like its own little group and conversation which is which is what we want really um, and some of the clubs have been going almost as long as the, the club was launched which was in December 2010 if I, if I remember December. right it's secret isn't it because I yeah. remembered that um, when I joined when I joined and the few meetings that I went to you had a, a notification of the date and the time but you didn't know the venue you just knew it was in your area which was quite fun because I didn't know where I was going to on a Sunday and um, and then you got your location and then met in the location and it was quite funny really because I met at Bramwell Park at one of them and um, when I got there you, you then started bumping into people carrying cake carriers around which was fun <laughs> and then we all and thankfully it was a nice dry day so I was able to all sit on the lawn put down some picnic blankets thankfully I took one with me um, some people didn't, and uh, we all sat down and had a taste of each other's cake and took home bits of each mm. other's cake as well, which was quite... So you took cake with you, mm. but took cake back home as well. well that's, that's the beauty of it, and the, the clandestine bit is because we don't... We, we only reveal the location to people who actually book it place. Right. And we have each event uh, a theme based to give people some sort of incentive or ideas, yeah. uh, or even challenges as to what to bake. But the themes are only there as a suggestion. Yeah. People shouldn't stick to things. Yeah. If, if they love to bake a very simple cake, whether it's a drizzle cake, and that's the only cake that they love to bake, then come along regardless of the, of the thing. 
Yeah. But we are non yes, we're non-competitive. Is any cake that's left over? Everybody took a piece so Yeah, we all did. Right, let's yeah. open the oven for you. Yeah. And this is going in the oven at 180 degrees pan at this stitch for 25 minutes. So we'll have a look. And we've popped you in the oven with the light on. With the light on. So, 20 <laughs> minutes. Have we got the timer on? Uh, no, because I don't know. Do you know about these ovens for years? Right. I don't know how to use the timer. So we're talking about 5, 10, 15, 20. 25. So between quarter to and ten to, if someone can give me a nudge, mm -hmm. please. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll have extra cakes. Right. So, are you going to start putting these together, or are you making some buttercream? I'm going to make some buttercream. Yeah. So that at least that's ready. Well, why don't you quickly do that then? I'll just tell them how we're going to put this together and we'll make some buttercream. Okay. So, guys, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the rice baking sponge mix, okay? And as I say, if you buy the gourmet gadget tree tonight, it's discounted to £35. And um, in the big stores, it's up to £49, as I said previously. Um, we do sell it at £42, but I've put it on offer for tonight and I might run it till Wednesday. Um, at £35 and I'll throw in the baking kit, uh, the Victoria sponge from Wrights as well for you. So if I remember right, I haven't made this mix myself, so we, under, we need 150 mils of water. Can you just pass me the scales again? Um, there you are, there you go. No. So we need 150 mils of water. Just borrow that. First of all, pour the cake mix into a large bowl and mix in 150 ml of water. So we'll do that. I'll bring this bowl up here, actually. I'll them down there. There's nothing about ice and steel, but when you wear glasses, <laughs> yeah, I know you suddenly get a cloud, do right? A fog appearing. So we've got that. We need 150 ml of water. So the good thing I liked about this gadget was. Um, instead of getting all the cake mix out and everything for when the kids come round, the grandkids come round, you can just let, get this little gadget out and make things really, really easily. And if I said they're only little cakes, um, don't go, don't go mad and think they're big cupcakes. I'll just send John over there, and those are the types of things that you'll make with the kids. So John, John, just show them those over there. Ever so exciting. <laughs> Do you need to go, John? Then. So, they're not the most prettiest decorated, but children do love them. And then John, if you want to come back here. So, please put in here the cake mix. Now, you can use a mixer, or you can actually do it by hand. So because you've got the kids here, this is the bit that you want the kids to have a go at. You will have to help them out because you do need to give it a good mix for a minute, it says. But uh, you know what kids are like. And the other thing is, with using the cake mix, you can use any mix for the gourmet gadgetry machine. But with using the cake mix, it just makes it all nice and simple. You don't have to be weighing out everything for yourself. And so just give that a really nice mix there and that's just the water and the batter at the moment so use electric with three that's all you need how we do that pour the cake mix into a large bowl mix in 150 grams of water and mix for one minute uh, you can whisk it for a lot longer, but just mix for one minute. So that's easy. No butter, no eggs, no nothing. Kids would be happy. You know what they're like. They get bored, don't they, very quickly. So let's put this machine together now then. Okay. Now, in fairness, I had to ask Maria to show me how to put the machine together this morning. This afternoon, sorry. So, John, if you want to pop over here. Just show them. So make sure that this one goes on the bottom, okay, this is for your cupcake, and you'll see it's got, um, you see that little ridge there, okay, so you need to make sure that goes into there, line it up, and then click it in, and then this one, exactly the same, 
So we're just going to line it up there and then we're going to click it in there. And then I've just got some vegetable oil and we're just going to give it a quick misty in here. Don't need much. You can use spray oil as well. It is non-stick, it's just to, I don't know why, the lady who, or who uh, owns this company just says give it a, a light spray. So there we are, we're just going to quickly do that. I'm going to get the mix on. So this is what the kids like doing, isn't it? So let's get the spoons out. So I don't know which way to show the bowl. Now let's get the spoons out. Let's get this in, fill this up. And the good thing with this is, this mix will make your donuts and your cake pops all from one mix. So we're gonna make seven of each of these. So we're gonna make seven little cupcakes first. And then what she says is turn it on, okay, turn it on, so we're going to click, click it together. Now I may have got this bit wrong, but I've unplugged it simply because as soon as I plug it in, it comes on. So the time is um, 28 minutes past 8, and it says leave in there for between 3 to 7 minutes, which is really very strange. So I'm going to leave them in there for 5 minutes, and then I'm going to give them a quick jab for my cake thing to see if they're ready okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to send you back to lynn so the question is should the, should the machine be hot first we don't know we don't know and would it be easier to pipe the mixture in it would be clever vlogs who was that lynn <laughs> elena lynn 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 better lynn better Clever clogs, Lynn, yeah. I was going to do that for me donuts, actually, pipe it in, because when I did the donuts earlier, I made a right mess of them. So, um, anyhow, so that's, I was going to do that. I've got the buttercream ready, so that when we pipe them afterwards, so you can do, you know, bright colours for the kids, because the kids love using the bright colours. And um, if you're wondering what this mix is here, I had loads of sprinkles. You know when you get sprinkles and you just get a bit of everything? So I just shoved them all in one container. So don't ask me what this blend is, because it's not a blend. Basically, I had about 20 tubs, 30 tubs of sprinkles with just little bits in. And uh, they were driving me mad in the cupboard, so I've just shoved them all in together and hope for the best. And then I've also put the sugar pipings out. We actually have loads and loads of sugar pipings on the website. And the kids love these. These are the top selling ones at the moment, the unicorn ones. But we've got the little Christmas ones there. The fairies, they love the fairies. Don't forget the boys, the pirates. The gingerbread men are out for Christmas. The robots, there's hundreds of them. Um, those are the three colours I'm using on the colour splash today. Um, might even glitter some up with our hologram. So those of you who heard my conversation about the glitter, um, we're going to use a bit of that. Do we sell those pink knives? We don't. I got them years ago, absolute years ago, and I actually don't know where I got them. What I would probably say is Google pink spa spatulas, and that, that's all I did. So, so, yeah. And basically, whenever I want anything pink, that's what I do. I Google it. So if I want pink bowls or pink spatulas, or that's what I Google first, and then see what comes up. So Lynn's doing something interesting here. Are you having a fight with your... I'm having a fight with my novel. <laughs> See, it goes wrong for everybody. Yeah. The idea <laughs> is, if I were to cut the bottom, yeah. some of the piping might come out. So I'm just, I put the nozzle at the bottom and I'm, I'm not going to cut too much, just in case. And there just really needs to be enough. Yeah. That probably, because when you actually squeeze, as you know, it just stops a bit at the bottom. Yeah. Did so, you want a knife for cutting your cake before? I did, yes, please. Yeah, because I forgot that last week, and we don't want you getting sold off this week, do we? No, I'm going to level <laughs> the tops of the cakes apart from one of them. And you can use this brand new knife that's just come in from PME. Ta da! <laughs> Thank you. Next question is how do I open it? So there you go. Right, there we are. I'm only actually going to level two of the cakes, and what you could do, and what I did 
actually when I made these cakes earlier, if they're very doughed, which these were, while they're slightly warm, but you need to let them cool a little bit in the tins, you could get some uh, baking parchment, put them on your wire rack, yeah, and then just turn it over it, and it will settle a little bit. But as you can see, there's still a dome on there. That's what I should have done last week. When I did that cake last week, I should have just turned them all over, because for this cake, you do need a flat, don't you? But you do, because there's going to be a big uh, gap, and yeah. you will either use loads and loads of buttercream, or you will lo use loads and loads of uh, jam, which is what I have brought today. But these will not be wasted because you could either freeze them, make them in trifles, or just nibble away, or... Yeah. Or feed the birds. Or feed the birds. So I'm just going to do... I was going to say, Maria's got her eye on it. She, she look at the size of me, and Maria, look at the size of Maria, and she eats all the cake scraps. <laughs> well, you know, cake... It's good for you every once in a while. Oh, look at her. She doesn't put any weight on. She eats it all. <laughs> You'll notice that I'm not going to go all the way to the edge because I don't want to waste too much. And we can put yeah. plenty of buttercream in there. So what I'm... And I'm going to leave this one because this is going to be the top. Yeah. So it has a nice dome. Oh, yeah. And we're going to crumb coat it all. So this is my buttercream. And there's 200 grams of butter at room temperature and I've mixed this with some of the Christmas punch, your flavoured icing sugar Carol, and 150 grams of uh, plain icing sugar and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trouble you for a spoon. Yes. Yeah. This is actually some what is it? peach raspberry and blackberry jam that I made at a jam workshop in London a while back. So, But you can use your favourite. Uh, preserve and just put a good dollop on there and with my Someone, someone's just asked what's the what's the pink thing under the cake board oh it's the grippo mats and we do sell them in a saucy colors um there's no, there's not there's not many pinks left if i'm really honest but we do sell them on the website and it's ideal for stopping your um i mean that that's not moving is it no no, I use them when we go to the cake shows and I have to load up all the, the car with all the cakes. I put them on top of the cake boxes to stop them moving and they're great if you've got a cake that you're travelling with. Yeah. Just put it in the boot of the car and put your box on top, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. But they are on our website and they're called Grippo mats. Uh, these are the oblong ones and we've also got round ones as well. I think they're £1.99 or something like that, £2 something. Now what I'm going to do is, um, because this buttercream is fairly firm, I'm not just going to spread it and dollop it on. What's really nice, and someone mentioned ooh, earlier about... Just let me stop. Ooh, ooh my cakes are made. Gosh, look at those. Look at those, bad boys. Oh, I am chuffed. They look wonderful. Yeah, so there's my cakes. So let me just see if they're cooked. Because she said three to three to seven minutes. And we've got a clean thing. They look cooked, don't they? Yeah. So then she said, gently ease them out, which we'll do now. Sorry, Lynn. That's okay. Have a look at my cakes. Have a look at yours. So we're going to gently ease them out. Don't let the kiddies do this. So uh, gently ease them out. Ooh, look at that, John. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I put enough grease in my pan. Oops. There we go. So I'll carry on getting these out, and then we'll go back to the next one. I didn't bring in a. I didn't bring in a, a cake rack either. Oh, I did. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do a couple of circles of buttercream around the edge. Oh, I'm impressed with them. Go I sound surprised, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I've never used this thing and then I have to wing it on the night. I quickly had to use it this afternoon and ask Maria how to put it together. Now, with the, if you wanted, you could actually try and spread it, but as you can see, even now, it's going to get all messed up. So, put the next layer on top, like that. Just give it a gentle squeeze. And then repeat with your favourite preserve. And what you can do is, depending on which flavoured sugars you use, you can use a complementary 
preserve to go with it. Yeah. Well, that one looks good enough anyhow, yeah. doesn't it? So. I this has that. got quite a few chunks of fruit in here. But look at me buns, John. They are gorgeous. What do you think of them? I'm quite chuffed with them. Do I sound excited? <laughs> <laughs> I'm well chuffed with them. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, my little buns. But we were having this conversation. They're not cupcakes, are they, Linda? Buns. Buns. <laughs> I think I'll be on a mission to bring back the buns. So we're going to decorate those afterwards. So I'm just going to let those cool down. I need to put them somewhere else because John wants to lean on this top. So I'll put them over there. So with the second layer, we'll do exactly the same again. And as you squeeze your bag, give it a twist. I've often seen people struggle on TV and the squeeze and squeeze. Yeah. But all you need to do is just twist that Keep top. twisting, yeah. And remember that you have to leave enough because we're going to do a crumb coat as well and a little bit of decoration on top. So, great, the last great one. buns. Pardon? They're great buns. Who said that? Julie. Julie. They are great buns, Julie. <laughs> I'm doing my best to line things up, but. Do you know what? You're having the same trouble as me last week. When you're there under pressure, it's hard to see that yeah. they're straight, isn't it? But it is straight now. You're straight there. Yeah, I was thinking the same. Sarah's just said, nice buns, Carol. Wonder where your secret admirer is tonight. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be gutted he's, missed, he's miss, missed your buns. I blocked him. I banned him. We had a rude admirer on last week. Did you? Yeah, well, I, I come to catch up. <laughs> I come to catch up and um, I thought he said something nice. He said, I think he said, oh, I like girl body. So I was joking. He said, no, oh, I'm lucky. And then he said something rude afterwards. So they oh, all told wow. him off. Anyhow, he's been blocked. <laughs> Anyhow, I've just noticed John's mum's joined us. Hi, Dorothy. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm struggling. What I'm doing here is, just to make it easier, I'm doing a crumb coat, which is a very thin layer of buttercream. And if you were doing extra coating, I'm not doing huge amounts of coating, you can then pop the cake in the fridge for it to firm up a bit yeah. if you need to put an extra coat on. But I just want to do a little skimming and what have you. Okay. Right, so while, while you just do that, so let me just show you guys um, what I've done here. Okay, I didn't put enough oil in here, okay, so if you have a look. So where before I did give them a little coat, so I've not actually put enough oil in there, they've stuck. So what we're going to do is just going to press that little button, don't know whether John can see it there, and that little button there releases the pan. Now, I know I said do this with the kiddies, but don't let them do this bit. Come on, move that in the middle. And then this top one here... You just press that top one and it comes out there as well. And then I'm going to get those out of the way and we'll do the cake pops with the same mix. So we'll get the cake pops going. Just going to put it on exactly the same. So go on then, we're back to you. Right, I'm just very carefully keeping one eye on the cakes in the oven and the other eye on my crumb yeah. coating and you can see it's not completely flat but all you need to do is just get some buttercream and just fill those cracks in. So Lynn what made you think of doing the, the club then? What started you off? Have you always been baking? Did you just want to meet up with other fellow bakers or something? Well the simple answer to the question was that no one else was doing a cake club and I was actually doing the secret tea room in my own home. Oh what's that? where I was actually baking afternoon teas for total strangers and then <laughs> I so Total strangers, inviting them in the house? Inviting, yes, people would book a place, they wouldn't know where it was and a bit like the clandestine cake club that you will only get to know where the location is once you've booked. And what made you come up with that idea? Well there was a supper club movement in London at the time around about 2009 and I thought oh well I'll have a go at that because I do enjoy baking, I'm more of a baker than an actual cook or chef as it were. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try, and I had a, a blog at the time, and a very small, my Twitter account, and I would advertise the dates and times on the website, and people would email me, saying that they want to come, you know, two people want to come or whatever. And how many people did you have come in? I used to have anywhere between 10 and 12, so really? my husband and son, they would help move the furniture around, and we'd get 
this little table out in the front room enough for four people and then we would use the dining room table and I'd serve teas but one thing I always wanted to make a point of doing was because I'm from Leeds in Yorkshire which is where I, I live I wanted all the ingredients to be Yorkshire ingredients yeah so we used Yorkshire butter yeah Yorkshire ham I made Yorkshire tea loaves Yorkshire tea loaves what Yorkshire they? tea loaves that were there it's a bit like a, a bar of brith or a, a, a fruit cake but you actually soak the fruit overnight in, in Yorkshire tea and how many did you get to your first session then 12 it was always 12 every time every so time. I had four people sat in the front room in a little table yeah. and what's for yeah an eight around my dining table which is like a dining kitchen yeah and my daughter would help me so we would brew we'd have our little aprons on we would brew the Yorkshire tea and we would serve we used to have decaf and all sorts of different flavored teas right and, and did, the, did those people bring anything with them no 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 I would do all the baking all the cakes all the little savory tarts the Yorkshire tea loads the scones yeah. I would get the potty cream and the, the jams and I would serve these afternoon teas in my own home and to go back to your question about how or why I started the clandestine cake club, Just I was actually, ooh, let's have a look around you that man. That'll be doing, it'll look all right. Can we have a quick test? Yeah, do you want to say so? Yeah. Oh. This is where you get a They're nice looking good. steam bath. They're looking good. They do, don't they? Yeah. I think they might need... A bit longer than the bottom ones. Yeah, just, yeah, because you can see they're not... Gosh, I'm just going to leave them that extra two or three minutes. Okay, so let me just answer this question. We've just had Kelly, what was her name? Kelly Minnis? Kelly Ann Minnis. Kelly Ann Minnis ask us do we deliver our sugars to the USA? We, do we, we don't sell them in the USA, but if you message me on Facebook afterwards, I'll give you an email address, Kelly. And, and then you can let me know what you want and I can send you a shipping quote. So back to Lynn. Yes, I was, um, one day I was actually watching some of my guests and they were having such a fabulous time that they, the link was uh, that they'd been brought together because of afternoon teas really and baking and they were having such a, a really good time. And one person, I remember saying, oh, I don't want to leave. And I thought, oh, well, let's put the kettle on and we'll have another cup of tea. And then I thought, well, how can I bring people together but without me having to do all the baking? So I went on the internet to look for a cake club and there was nothing at all. Because I was going to say, it must have been hard work just baking for 12 people, isn't it, at your expense? Well, yes, and, and I never made any money out of it. And people would pay just to... I think I was only charging something like ten pounds at a time. Yeah. But that was never enough to make any money. But I did enjoy doing it, and I did meet some wonderful people who are still friends now, and they're, they're very much involved with the clandestine cake club. Yeah. Um, and so I started one of the cake clubs in Leeds. Someone suggested the word clandestine cake. Well, yes, clandestine, because I wanted to be in keeping with the secret element where. You would only get to know where the location is if you actually booked a place online. Yeah. And each event has a different theme, which is often picked by the organisers or the members. And people would bake a cake at home. They can bring a guest if they want. The only criteria for this guest is that they like to eat cake. Yeah. And I took a guess with me, right, right everyone. <laughs> I'm not actually sure what happened there, but Lynn and I were chatting away and uh, John just went into complete panic because you all disappeared and we've no idea. So we're just going to build this audience up again. So can you give us some waves and hellos and let us know that you're back? <laughs> so we, uh, we've, we've no idea. So we're calling it part two. Um, while you've been gone, Lynn has taken her cakes out of the oven, which are looking extremely good, aren't they, Lynn? They Look are those beauties. beauties. Yes. And as you can see, when you test with a skewer, which is what I always do, it's clean. There's nothing on there. They're completely clean. That's your third one there. Just pop it there. If there was still a so bit... So you can see all three yeah. that came out. Yeah. If there was still a little bit of batter on there, then leave them in the oven for a little bit longer. But those are just fine. And there's just little bit of on there. So I'm going to leave those to cool completely. 
while I finish off this. And as you can see, I've actually done this crumb coat. Yeah, no worries. So have we got people coming back, John? We have. Back with us? And we don't have everybody back, unfortunately. I think there's, there's, back. we're still wondering where we've gone on the old, <laughs> on the last one. John doesn't know what happened. You just all disappeared. So uh, I'm sorry about that, it said, guys. it said you're having a connection problem. Are we having a connection problem now? No, no, not now. Right, okay. So while Lynn is just quickly doing that, um, I've actually been reading the instructions, Sarah. I think it's somebody said. And you're quite right. This is what happens when I'm winging it on the night. It says, turn your machine on, okay, and let it warm up. So, John, if you go here, so I'm just going to turn it on. So, it says, close your three-in-one sweet snack maker, preheat it for a few minutes. The green and red light will be illuminated to show that the machine is preheating. When the green indicator light switches off, the machine is hot enough. So, as soon as that switches off, we're going to put in the... Um, Cake, cake pop pops. balls, yeah. Now, one of the things I do like about using the cake pops, I don't know if any of you have made cake pops, and I was laughing with Lynn earlier. Don't decorate any more of that cake yet, Lynn. I was laughing with Lynn earlier. The reason I don't eat cake pops is that I heard people break up buttercream, break up crumb coats. So like your cake there is ideal, isn't it? Yeah. So you would break that up, okay, into a bowl. You'd add buttercream to it, and then basically you would form it into little balls, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. And um, I don't like that idea of having somebody's nails and stuff in it. So I quite like this idea, but it's each to their own. So go on then, I'll let you carry on. I had a question about how, do, how does someone uh, find out if there's a cake club in their area? If they go to the website www.clandestinecakeclub.co.uk, you will see a whole host of tabs, main menu tabs, and it will have events and it will have club tab. If you go to the club tab, there's a search engine for such as Manchester and Bolton and all the bigger cities. But you can also, if you click on the UK tab, they're separated into UK and overseas or international. If it's in the UK, have you got clubs international? We've got them from America. Have you? Fantastic. Uh, Japan, Australia, New Zealand. Have you? And what I find is that people because we've got people watching us from all over the world here, so that's oh. great. Yeah, we, we we've got um, something from America tonight, so they could possibly join a couple, couldn't they? We have. We get quite the other, a, yeah. a few Australians joining us. We've got them in Auckland, New Zealand, in Melbourne, Australia, and we have Okinawa in Japan. Lots in America. Uh, some of the American clubs have been going for years. Yeah. And they, they tend to share the events in each other's homes, which is really nice. Yeah. And if you go to the club tab, click on UK or international, and you just have one page of search. The in the UK they're separated into regions. So if you yeah. live in the northeast, northwest, just scroll down and find the club. And if you register as a member. Activate that email that is sent to you. That's the important yeah. thing. So you don't activate that. You don't activate it. How do I know that your email is correct? Yeah, and, or you you're know, not a spammer, something, yeah, etc. And then once you activate that, I will then approve you. Then you log in, find the club that you want to join, and click that very important join group button, and you will see your name listed as a member. And then you can look at the event tab within each group and look to see when there's an event coming up and then you just book online. You can say what cake you're baking if you bring in a guest and then probably a week or a few days before the actual event, the organiser will send a private message with the full location details. But one thing I ask is that if you change your mind, if you booked at one of these events and you've changed your mind, please log on and cancel because there's nothing worse and an organiser sitting there waiting for people, people yeah. and people don't turn up. It does happen and we all have these emergencies in life, which is understandable, but please do let your organiser know. Yeah. Super. So you, you, wouldn't you wouldn't happen to know if there's a, a, a place, a club in Aberdeen? There isn't, but if that person would like to set one up, I have a, what, a, 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 a clandestine organiser starter pack. 26 pages of information. If you go to the website, scroll down to the bottom of the screen where it says organise a starter pack, download that, have a good read, and I would love you to set one up. Get in touch with me and uh, I'll just get them sorted. But So she's gone from asking to now being the organiser. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at that for promotion. Yeah. Hey, John, we should do that, shouldn't we? <laughs> 
<laughs> can we promote anyone to run sugar and crumbs for us while we run off? <laughs> Anyhow, just before don't, you do don't that, don't think then, yeah. daft enough. Just before you do that, then I'm just going to put my cake mix in here because this is at temperature now, and uh, while they're cooking, you can decorate that cake. So we're back to the same baking, John. Okay. So we're back to the same mix. So we're not we're not making another mix. This is the same batch of mix, and we're just going to quickly fill these up. And as I say, I put these in by spoon, but uh, that one's got far too much in. You know, I'm going to use teaspoons. Sorry, John. Just, uh, just punch John there at the, the drawer. So I'm just going to put those in there. So out of this cake batter, we'll have enough for the, for the cupcakes, for the cake pops, and for the donuts. So let's just probably overfill these by the looks of it. So we'll do a few small ones as well. And uh, guys, you know that I'm no good with the chocolate. So I melted some uh, candy melts before and um, I don't even show you what happened to them. I think me and melted chocolate are just never gonna get on. So uh, we're gonna have to use ice and sugar for decorating these up. And as you can see, they're cooking these already. I'm gonna have to take a bit out. It's not good, is it? So uh, this has been preheated already. How much are these machines? Uh, they are 49.99 in all the big stores, and I'm making a right mess of this one. Oops. Making a right mess of this one. We have them on our website because we've undercut everybody to 42 pound, but I've got them on special for anybody who wants to buy one for 35 pound, and they get a right baking mix as well. So, like I say, if you want to make professional cakes with these, no, it's not. This is just a bit of fun on your kitchen worktop with one cake mix making seven cupcakes, seven cake pops, and we're gonna make some donuts if I've got enough left. But I think I put too much in there. So we're back to Lynn then, Lynn's gonna decorate this while my cake pops cook. Oh no, can I talk to you for a knife just to cut my fix? You can. I did that big one, oh, that wooden one. Where did you do with it before? Did I, oh. Remember I gave you a wooden one? I did have one, what did I do with it? I'll go and get you another one. What I'll do as well, I'll, wait for it. I'll, just, I'll just have a little bit of buttercream left, so I'm just going to dot. The reason why I'm doing this is because with it being a dome, I actually, and I want to put fruit on, and I have lots of blueberries, it's just a case of using this to anchor, thank you, to anchor the, the fruit on the top. So, and I've got some lovely figs here, which I'm going to cut and quarter what you can actually do you don't always have to cut them in half so if you cut them halfway down and then just give them a squeeze that one can go in the center like that and then the others can be cut into quarters and you can just decorate them around the edges and because i've put the buttercream little rosettes it will actually anchor them down and stop them from falling off. These figs are really fresh. How red they are. I love size. figs. Yeah. I, that's, I do love them. I think they're delicious. When I was a young girl, I used to think, oh, I'm not eating one of those ugly things. But once you've tasted one, they're lovely, aren't they? They are. And, and to be fair, I think it was Johnny got me on them. I don't know where we were. I think we were on holiday. But these are so, oh. are so ripe. Now, you just need a handful of blueberries, and some of them will spill over, but that doesn't really matter. So fill all the little crevices, and perhaps the ends. These little rosettes with, oops, that's one that's gone on the floor. But you can decorate this with any sort of fruit, and with the icing sugar being of a nice Christmassy sponge, I thought, well, we'll go for figs. But if you get one of your, the other flavoured ice and sugars, you can just use fruit and preserves just yeah, to complement. You can actually it. use any flavoured ice and sugar. It's just that you like the Christmas punch with this one, isn't it? I do, yes. And it's nice for that. It's a nice to have a, a nice idea for Christmas coming up. Yeah. And I'm going to get carried away with this. And if I was at home, there would be one on the cake and one I'd eat one. But. 
And then I'm going to finish off with these physalis, which I suppose you know they're a member of the is it Deadly Nightshade family? Which is a member of, which is the potato and the tomato. I don't know, but you know, I think they look good on desserts, but I think they taste awful. They're, they're quite sour, sharp, yeah, they're they? cut. Yeah. yeah. I think they look great. You know, when yeah. you go into a posh restaurant and they bring them out and yeah. they look amazing, but uh, I wouldn't eat one ever again. But I have given <laughs> these a little bit of white. Sometimes you have to wipe all the, the dust off. Yeah. But you can see where I'm going with this. Yeah. And if you want to, just tidy up the. I'll use this cloth here. You know, just get little cloth and just tidy up the base. So while you do that, let me just show here now, the cake pops are made. So I've just had a sneaky peek before, and there they are. So you see where I put too much in, and um, I put too much in, so uh, anyway, I'm going to be digging those out while Lynn uh, shows you. Let's just go for one of the perfect ones that are perfectly baked. Oh, look at that bad boy. Ooh, look at him, oh, I'm well chopping them. Yep, they pop out, and then I'm gonna have to Right with the others. So there, that's one that's got batter around it. So we're just gonna, oh, look at that, even peels off ever so easy. So they all just pop out nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're back to you, Lynn. I'm just finishing off. It's just to hide the base, you know, the little bits there. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is only just a crumb coat. And it wouldn't even matter if you had some jam skimmed around the side um, just give it that little rustic I have to say it does look beautiful thank you and the cake smells beautiful Gillian says you could play snooker with those I could hey look at these and they break off really easy off the thing so uh, let's put that. that this is my mistake guys this isn't how you do it this is me putting too much batter in by using the big spoons. I should have maybe used the teaspoons. So, uh, but you may be able to play snooker with them, but they are, they are really nice and doughy. So, uh, anyway, we're back to Lynn's cake. Wow, that's lovely, Lynn. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And that's just a finished cake. Absolutely. So what do we think, guys? How lovely is that? I think you could all make one of those, couldn't you? Just a very simple Victoria sponge recipe. Really? And you know what? It looks so effective. They're all loving it. So what do we think? Do we want to say a big thank you to Lynn? How easy was that to make? So not only has she put that cake together, she's actually made the Victoria sponge for you as well. So in that time, if we had enough stuff, she could make another one. So <laughs> But that looks fantastic, doesn't it? That's really quite a nice display for the centre of the table, isn't it? It is, yeah. It does it look really, really very good. And when you actually slice the cake, because I did one of these the other week, you have the two layers of buttercream yeah. reserve, and it is quite, I think there's a picture on the website. Yeah. You've probably got a picture of it. We are good to yeah, slice it. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. But no, that looks absolutely great. They're loving that one. So we're going to put the recipe onto the top of the page. So part one of tonight's um, episode will be going, uh, will be pinned to the top of the page. And then you'll have to go further down to see part two. So we're sorry about being disconnected before. So I am just going to take out my next plate. Plate's here. And then, Lynn, if you just want to show your cookery books. Oh, yes. And uh, all the information and the fabulous things they get in there. This was the first book that was published, and each book actually contains recipes, not just from me, but from members as well. And they're all cake. You might find the odd cheesecake inside. Uh, but as you can see, we've got to raspberry cake and made by Paul Barker. And we've got tea loaves and this one, Dutch hazelnut cake. But they're all contributed by members of the Clandestine Cake Club. And look, we have a lovely little hedgehog cake there as well. Oh, how cute is that? That was a first one. the books, Lynn? Well, it depends on where you buy them. I mean, the, the retail price for this one is £20. In fact, they're both £20. But if you go to Amazon, there's a link on the website. If you go to Amazon, sometimes Amazon will have a, a deal that can sometimes go up and down to about £5 at a time. But you can get them at all major bookstores such as the Waterstones and um, Smiths, yeah. is it W.H. Smiths. And, and can you buy them off your website? No, you can't get them on the on the website, so just go 
but there is a link at the base of the website for each book that will take you to Amazon so that you can buy them there. And it, it is an affiliate link and anyone buying the book through affiliate link means that I will get a very small amount of commission. Yeah. You don't pay any extra for the books or any of the products that you buy on Amazon. It's just another way of, of websites and bloggers to earn some you know, much yeah. needed funds to keep these websites going. Yeah. Because what people need to realise, you don't actually earn any money for having this website, do you? No. Your, you support this financially yourself, don't you? Yes. Because you don't charge any members for anything. No, no the web registration is free, attendance is free, the organisers do run their clubs in their own free time and they do an absolutely amazing job. And um, the book sales um, that I receive actually goes to the cost of running the website. Yeah. Uh, so buy the books. So by joining, it's a great way of meeting new people, yes. new people sharing recipes and experiences, and um, and joining a fabulous club, isn't it? Well? Yes. Yeah, some have made. Uh, I get lovely emails from people about what it means to them that they've moved from the area, that they have no friends, and they've um, made friends. They've made friends and they've known each other now for oh, five, six, and seven years, yeah. and one of them being in the club. Yeah. Right, so I put the cake mix, so thanks for that, Lynn. We'll come back to it. So I put the cake mix now into here, and um, I don't know whether I'm going to have enough for all seven cakes. Uh, Lynn, can you just, just pass those scissors there, John, please? Thank you very much. So we're going to do the donut. So this is just for one box of rice cake mix. So you don't have to use the cake mix at all. You can actually make your own cake mix. Um, as Lynn Feather said before, you use a piping bag, and maybe I should have used a piping bag for all of it. She's a clever girl, isn't she? So, um, but um, I did a trial run of these this afternoon, about four o'clock this afternoon. I said to Maria, we really need to get this out and have a go at it. And um, I had a right old time putting this in by spoon. So I thought then we need to use a piping bag for this, but maybe I should have used it for the whole, the whole lot really. So let's get these on, making a much neater job of this now, I think. But don't, like I say, this is great for when the kiddies come round. Um, you can get this out, you can make this mix by hand. All you have to do was add water to it. So we're going to close this, turn it on. And uh, all you have to do is add water to the cake mix and you've seen how well it rises already. So, um, and then we'll have a little bit of decorating. So I'm just going to, made up three colours, take a seat Lynn, we'll come back to you. So what I'm just going to do is, three colours, let's triple tone this bag, okay. So this is the 1M Wilton, it's on our website, and all I'm going to do is, I'm going to put lime green on the outside. So when we're triple toning, as I always show you double toning, so let's triple tone, so we're going to put a layer there and then we're going to put the pink on the inside so let's put the pink in did deep come back to us john does everybody come back to us or we lost them all no everybody i think most people have come back yep does everybody come back say hi oh, so a, few, a few people still on on part one <laughs> my, still my, watching my, the blank my, screen. my mom included <laughs> so we've got the pink in there and then in the centre, so we've got the lime green, the pink, and then in the centre, we're just going to put this bright yellow. Okay, so we're just going to quickly do this. And I'm just going to need to put the kettle on. Just put the kettle on. And where's my buns? So here's my buns. So again, you've got the kiddies, they can play with this. So what you can do with the kiddies is just get them to spoon it on, or you can actually do your rose, twir rose swirls if you wanted to. So we're gonna finish that one off there. And we'll put a little gingerbread man. And because he's Victoria sponge, um, you can use any flavor. And the flavour I've used in tonight is the new Christmas flavour, the toasted marshmallow, which is to die for. So let's just get a few of these on. I'm using the sugar pipings tonight. They're all on our website. I think Maria's put the link on. Have you, Maria? So let's just put these on. So the kids love these. 
So again, I do one for the boys, the pirates as well. So there you go, John, are you in here? Put that one on. So let me just show you. So we're just going to do a little swirl and we'll put a Santa on this one. These are about £2.49, I think they are, for 12 sugar pipings. So if you're not very good at cake decorating, you know, I'm just showing you how to do a swirl here, but you could just pat it on for a spoon with the kids if you wanted to. So there's the robot. So can you see the pink? It's had a change in colour from the lime green to the pink, and now the, the yellow's coming through. Just really very easy. And the, I think we've got about, I don't know, about 20 or 30 different types of sugar pipings. So let's put a snowman on for this one. What um, knockers so are you using? I'm using the Wilton, I've just run out of buttercream there. I'm using the Wilton 1M. It's on our website and it's $1.99. We do do a free pack with the 2D, the 1M, and a round, a large round as well. And I think that's $4.99, so it's actually a better value. You got that oh, you've had a new member. Karen Naylor's joined the Clandestine Cake Club. Yay, Karen! Yeah, Karen. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but well, that's what we want to see, is how many of you are actually going to join it. Because uh, it's free, so you may as well join it. I'll stay until, until midnight. midnight. I'll approve everybody. Midnight. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, you don't get automatic um, approval, Lynn. Because of spammers and things like that, Lynn does have to make sure she approves everybody as well. So there you go, so there's the seven cupcakes. And then what we'll do is, is how am I um, donuts doing, John? I have no idea. Well, if we go around here, we'll have a look. Oh, they're not ready. Did you see that? I'll just pick them up again. They're not ready, but they're looking good. Well done, Lynn Feather. That's what happens when you uh, <laughs> when you use a piping bag. They all come out nice and neat. So, as I say, I tried to ganache them before and uh, didn't get very well with ganaching. Uh, not ganaching, melting chocolate. So I've decided me and melting chocolate are giving up. What did I do with that toasted marshmallow? So I'm just going to... Uh, Toasted marshmallow, and it's the delicious flavour. This one, who's had this one? The toasted marshmallow, because I've tried that one, it's really, really, really nice, really isn't it? Really yeah, nice. so uh, any of you guys out there who've had the toasted marshmallow, let everybody else know how fab it is. Because oh, Kelly, Kelly Ann in the US has just joined as well. Oh, hello, Kelly Ann, sorry we lost you before. So, uh John will show you, we've just done the cupcakes over there, so let me just have a bit of water. Now, I don't know why, don't ask me why, but I always use boiling water. And uh, people have said that they only use cold water, but I have I think it's some of my mother must have showed me, my grandmother, when I was making cakes when I was a kid. But just to add boiling water, what do you use, Lynn? I when you're making boiling water. water, yes. Do you use boiling yeah, water? Uh, there's something about boiling water. Yeah. Also, would it be... Boiled as well. You know, pre yeah, I don't know. But uh, my grandmother or mother used to show me to make the, mm -hmm. the water icing mm -hmm. with boiling water. So mm -hmm. I was surprised the amount of people who asked me why. And I thought, well, I don't know. I thought that's how you're supposed to make it. So you only add a little drop at a time because if you add too much, it dissolves. And if you see those cupcakes I did over there before, um, I added too much water and then it all dissolved. So again, this is something that while you've got the kiddies, they can do this. So you can add the water. It doesn't make the icing hot whatsoever. So we're going to add, I think we'll add lime green to this. So we'll add a drop of the lime green. You know I'm a fan of the colour splash. So let's just have a little drop of that. See, look, comes out exactly the same as it does on the packet. It's baked stable, the colour splash, guys. And who's going to Cake International? Because I'll have loads of colour splash with me, all in the uh, in the buckets there for you to buy. So um, a lot of people sell it at two pound twenty five, one ninety five. We sell it on our website for one sixty five. And I'm not sure if you're at the cake shows, we sell it for one fifty, don't we, John? Yep, we, we do. One fifty. For one fifty. So. Um, I've got some cake pop sticks here. 
Let's see if uh, I don't know how I'm going to decorate these. How would you decorate them? Would you stick them in and pull this over? I don't know. This is what I wanted to put with chocolate on before, but I, I made a right old mess. And it looks like I'm going to make a right old mess of this one as well. But you know what? This is all about the kids playing. So we'll, we'll just do that. I'll let that drip down a minute. I'm only going to do one. I'm not going to do loads because John will probably moan about his back. I can feel it already in the water. Him moaning. So uh, I haven't done a good job here, guys. I really don't think I should do these types of things. I think I should get somebody else in for these. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. We'll put our sprinkles on. So let's just get our sprinkles on there. Um, I was asking Lynn before, did she know how to melt the uh, candy pops? So we're just going to stick those on. And we'll stick them on our bucket. So I picked up this bucket from Hobbycraft the other week. And uh, and this is some flour foaming sponge. Ooh, look, it's <laughs> dripping. Would be ideal for Halloween, not for tomorrow, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> so uh, let me see how I'm doing up to doing. So how are these doing in here? Way, they're looking good. So they're looking good now, looking brown. Let's just give it another minute. And uh, let's recap what we're doing here in the kitchen, shall we? So let's just recap while they're on there. So um, we've got the Wilton bacon pans in, okay? These are anything from 40 odd pounds upwards. I think I've got them in at 38.99. You get three pans, okay? Obviously, you have to do two of each pan to get your pillow, yeah? And you get a heat um, core thing. Do you know how these work? No. No, no idea, but you know what? We're gonna have to give it a go, so we'll give that a go. We've got Gwen next week, so maybe I might even have the energy to make some on Monday after the cake show. What do you think, Ray? <laughs> no. <laughs> but we'll see how we feel. Um, we've got the cone cutters in. These are the mini ones for your smaller cakes. So if you're not doing a really tall cake, you've got your small ones and there's four different designs in there from Cakestar. They're new in. The Christmas cake plungers, uh, Christmas tree plungers, and they're in three different sizes as well. So they're really effective around the side of your cake. You're cooking them in sugar paste. So they're on sale, they've just come in. And then, the Gingerbread House, who I've told you about, the Baked In Boys are uh, going to be in here on the 20th of November. Merry Christmas from FMN. The carrot, um, Lynn has already used the knife and we have told you about these fabulous books. Get on Amazon and have a look for those fabulous books or any other good bookstore. And uh, these are ones that I did earlier this afternoon. So about four o'clock this afternoon, I've got this little gizmo out and had a go. So... They look pretty. These are those sugar pipings as well. And then we've got Lynn here with her cake. For anyone who's missed it. And I think this looks absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah, don't forget these. I think these have got to be done. So these ready? Hey, look at them. So what we will do is with these, we get a bowl. I'm just going to get these out with, where's that cake tester? Oh, let's get them out with a knife. So I'm just going to get these out. Now I've used cake mix for these and you can use donut butter if you want to. So let's just get those out. Ooh. How much are the pillow tins? I think the pillow tins are £38. I've tried to do them cheaper than everybody else who's doing them. And of course, with us, you get free delivery on orders over £30. Okay. And they're perfect for your DK applicators. Because you remember Kim Firth um, did the pillow tins. So they're a bit brown on one side than the other. That shows what happens when you peek. And then I thought I brought in a sieve. But I mustn't have. So let's just sprinkle a bit of that on. Flick them over. Are you laughing, Maria? Hey? Eh? Yeah, well, 
oh, this is it, we've got to rough it on the night, haven't we? So, I think I maybe should have used sugar, but never mind. I'm sure you lot have got better ideas of what to do with these. But I just wanted to show you that this thing does work and it is good fun. And uh, we've just done that tonight. Do we want to taste one? Are you laughing, John? Are you laughing at my thing? I'm, I'm not sure what to do. You don't know what to do? <laughs> In despair. I don't know what to do either. <laughs> So look how soft they are on the inside. inside. Yeah, see, look at that. Yeah. Do you want to taste them then? Should we taste them? Does it taste all right? Yeah. You know what? They do taste they good. Do actually, they do actually. They do. We look surprised. <laughs> <laughs> they do actually taste very nice. I know, I'm surprised. Yeah. yeah. They do taste good. Right, are we going to cook your cake? Oh, yeah. Mm. Shall we use this now? Mm. Right. Yeah, no, don't come round. Okay, let's get this cut. Let's get your knife out. I always think that cutting the first slice is the hardest one. Mm, me too. Yeah. Let's let's cut a big. Big. Do you know I never cut we never cut our wedding cake. Did you not? No. What did you do? We we were there poised with the photographer, she go like you do, stopping and starting, and then we whisked it away. It was a cake that I'd actually made. So every time I cut a cake with her, go to a cake for the event or at home, I always imagine that I'm cutting my wedding cake that day. Right. And what that. happened to the cake after that? Well, we all ate it. Right. We right. just all ate it. Yeah. yeah. So look, you can see. Wow, yeah. look at that. That looks amazing. Nice and level. And um, let's have one of those after. Yeah. And do you want to have a look inside, Chuck? Go around the other side. Can we see? So what do we think, guys? I said, those donuts taste all right. They do, don't actually. They? <laughs> Pleasantly surprised. Eh? I never said to cake decorating was my skills. <laughs> no, I'm not really. A, I'm more of a baker. I'm not really good at cake decorating. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm good at. <laughs> so, guys, are we getting a round of applause for Lynn there? Are they all mm -hmm. coming it, yeah, John? Is there likes. any questions? No, nothing at the moment. No? Okay. Nancy Craig's registered for the Edinburgh Cake Club. Oh, fantastic. Has anybody else registered for the there's club? Been, there's been about three or four pop-ups. So. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Thank we you. Want more, we want more than three or four, guys. We're going to put the link on the, it's a link on the website, on the Facebook page, Maria. Zip into the top. The club. Are and also, the, the website. No, I won't say anything. Right, the Facebook page is there, so you can go to the Facebook page and get to your club that way, can't they? Yes, there's a, a new club. We've just opened up a club on Facebook. We have a Facebook page with 11,000 followers, but we've just opened a, a Facebook group that people can join. And also, we've got this great big get-together for members at the Cake and Bake Show on the 11th of November. I forgot about that, yeah. yeah. In so the Champagne Bar. In the Champagne Bar area. Yeah. So if you go into, uh, to the Cake and Bake Show on the 11th of November, the in Saturday, Manchester. in Manchester, Come along and say hello and tell us that you actually saw us live on, on Facebook and uh, you know we'll sit down and have a good old chin wag. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because you did that in London, didn't you? You did. all met yeah. up there. Yeah, really so that's nice the 11th of November at the Champagne Bar. Lynn's going to be there all day, ready to meet any of you, tell you about the club. It's free membership, okay? Mm. Go and join your local club, make some friends with new bakers and, um, and hopefully you'll see a little bit more with Lynn as well, okay? So, is there any questions, John, before we go? No, nope, not at all. Are we done? Right, okay. So, uh, Lynn and I are going to have a clear up in the kitchen. <laughs> we should be back about half past nine, 25 to 10, after we've had a clear up. And then you can, uh, and Maria will put the other links on the website. Next week, we, well, this week, we are at Cake International from Thursday in Birmingham. That's one of the biggest shows there is. And on Saturday, we will know whether we're winners or not, won't we? And if we're not, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> so we have been voted down to you guys. Thank you very much for best product. Product nifty nozzles. Okay, we've sent in our video. We've sent in our nozzles, and uh, we're in the final. So now all we need to know now whether that is best product, and we will know late Saturday night, and we'll let you know what that is. Um, well. 
either in the night or on Sunday on our Facebook page and uh, we'll be home on Monday with Gwen Powell who we'll be celebrating with because we're all sharing a table together and uh, she'll be here demoing her DK and the press size tools and we'll have deep, deep sing, sing power. power. Power, yeah. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Deep Singh Bawa. <laughs> Can you remember that? No, I get that. Deep Singh Bawa, who is on his uh, home baking tour from India, going around the UK, and he's going around England and Ireland, basically. And here be here making something with the flavoured icing sugars, but using a recipe from India. So we will see you on Catch Up in 10 minutes. Bye-bye for now. Bye.